Hey, it's Em, here to talk about the most recent book I finished reading, which was The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Oh. <laughs> this is only my second Riley Sager book. I read Home Before Dark last year and actually really enjoyed it. As you might can tell from my reading habits, um, spooky houses, old houses, houses with creepy stories are kind of my thing. I really enjoy that kind of setting and story. <clears throat> so even though most Riley Sager books when I read the premise not interested, this one came out, it involves an old house, uh, I was like, cool, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> maybe I need to take a break from the haunted house books because yeah, no, this one wasn't good for me. It's set in 1983, coastal Maine. I'm familiar with uh, the area, more or less. I know this is fictitious, but I lived for 12 years within driving distance of coastal Maine, used to go up there. We have some beautiful pictures uh, of that area. Enjoy the setting. The book is set in 1983, but the murder mystery that it's centered around took place in 1929 in this house called Hope's End, which sits on the cliffs. I guess that's a part of this township that um, the rich people built their houses up overlooking the ocean. In 1929, all but one family member of the Hope family was murdered. Uh, the only one left, titularly, is Lenora Hope, who everyone believes killed her family, but there was never enough proof to convict her. Um, the main character of the story is, uh, God, I, Kit. I was like, I already have forgotten her name, but then I remembered, like, Candy, Kit Kat. Uh, <laughs> Kit is a caregiver, not a nurse not like, you know, a professional, so to speak, but someone that gets hired out to babysit invalids um, and help them with their daily routines. Uh, Lenora is in a wheelchair after some polio, I want to say. And also, I guess after stroke is nonverbal, she can only use her left hand. She can tap once for no, twice for yes, or pretty sure it was once for no, twice for yes. But anyway, she can also use a typewriter limitedly with a little help from Kit. So the book has chapters in which Lenora is typing her story um, and Kit is like anticipating some kind of confession. Meanwhile, other weird things are going on in the house, around the house, the previous caregiver disappeared <laughs> suddenly left in the night she must have been so scared it doesn't take a super genius to figure out that and here we are we're going into spoilers now so if you don't want to know you can click off knowing that I gave the book two stars <laughs> at the end of the day I almost gave it three like two and a half rounded it to three but the more I thought about it the less I liked it so if you don't want spoilers I'll see you later uh, <laughs> um, but it, it doesn't take a super genius to figure out that when Kit moves into the caregiver's room and finds all of Mary, the previous caregiver's stuff, that caregiver did not just leave in the middle of the night. That caregiver was murdered. And sure enough, within a few chapters, uh, Kit stumbles onto Mary's body, makes some wild assumptions again about what must have happened. And... <sighs> So I had a few things figured out really early on. I knew Mary was dead, that she hadn't just abandoned uh, her post. And I knew that Mrs. Baker was probably actually Lenora. And those both things uh, happened to be true. I was kind of like the eye color thing because they, they focused on the portrait of Lenora having green eyes and Mrs. Baker has blue eyes, obviously the Lenora in the wheelchair has the green eyes, but then I was like, there's something about the portrait then, and sure enough, that wasn't, that portrait is of Virginia, not Lenora, or whatever. It, it, it's complicated, but 
the, the book is, ends up just so convoluted and dumb that I, I just liked it less and less the more I read it. And, and I was actually kind of bored with it. None of the characters were compelling. I was not invested in any of them. I kind of didn't care what happened to any of them. I just was like, by, you know, the halfway point, kind of like with, um, what's the other one that I just read that, like, by the halfway point, oh, um, The Empress of Time, where I just started skimming, because I'm just like, I just want the story, and these characters are not entertaining me. They're not interesting to me, and I don't really care what happens to them. I just want to know the rest of the story at this point, and it's unnecessarily convoluted in the way that these books tend to be like the writer thinks they're being clever by adding so many I don't even want to say twists it's they're just dumb I uh, it just so it turns out that Kit's dad was actually the guy who worked at Hope's End in his youth and got Virginia pregnant and so the baby got sent away with the real Mrs. Baker and Lenora took on the, the role of Mrs. Baker uh, pretended to be Mrs. Baker it just it and so not both sisters are actually dead even though they originally said Lenora is the only one who survived they basically bribed the doctor to say that Virginia was dead so that Lenora could get all of the money to take care of the sister. Uh, it, I don't know. It was dumb. It was just all stupid. <laughs> and by the, yeah, by the end of it, I just, I didn't, I didn't care about anybody and I was just frustrated. And, you know, the writing is basic. It's not terrible, but it's not great. It's not something I'm like, ooh, you know. And when I get to the point, this is what I've been having. This is the problem I've been having reading lately. I pick up these books and they're fine. They're not bad enough to put down, but they're not so great that I'm like excited to pick up the book every time I have a chance to read, which tells me maybe I should just stop reading it instead of, <laughs> but like I'm just interested enough in the story to want to know what happens, even though the characters are not doing it for me. What I need are some recommendations for books that have really great characters because I take character over plot any day uh, and I'll interesting characters I'll follow them through the most mundane things uh, but like these are I guess everything I've been reading have been these plot driven books where it's just this and then this and then this and it's like you know ticking off the the plot points but then by the end of the day I don't even care because I don't care about the characters the character um, development and arcs are just not there and you know Kit is just uh, an obnoxious narrator like she just she's not bright and she's complaining that she's poor all the time and I don't know I just it, she wasn't interesting to read about she wasn't particularly sympathetic I just because she's so jaded with the chip on her shoulder that you can't really like her very much so, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Um, I, I, like I said, I almost gave it three stars. And then the more I thought about it, the less I liked it. So I ended up giving it two. Um, I think I put on Goodreads like 2.3, but it, like I'm not rounding it up for sure. Uh, <laughs> it just, it was only okay and not... Like I said, it was it was kind of ridiculous, and the more I think about it, the less I like it. So that tells you something, I guess, about it. Uh, will I read more Riley Sager? Again, I'd pick up a third book if it was a premise that interested me. I just, I haven't seen very many, whenever I read the premises of um, a lot of his books, um, they just, they don't interest me. I'm not really, I don't mind suspense. I'm not really a thriller reader. I prefer psychological. I like the ambiguous. I think that's why I like haunted house books because they tend to be ambiguous and spooky and not, you know, I, so, um, I'll tell you what, if you want a good, like, story about 
a house where something happened in the past and you're trying to figure it out and read The House at Riverton by Kate Morton. That's a great book. It's well written. It's engaging. All of the characters are interesting. It's got some gorgeous description and some really nice writing. And you know, you get your murder mystery in the past and you've got a nice frame story for it and it works and it's wonderful and <laughs> like the, this is not even close to as good as something like that. So yeah, in any case, if you've read The Only One Left, let me know your thoughts. If uh, you've read other Riley Sager and you like or hate them, let me know because I am curious about some of the other books. Like I said, I enjoyed Home Before Dark. I didn't think it was stellar writing or anything. It wasn't some great masterpiece, but it at least entertained me more than this one did. This book actually kind of bored me. Like I said, um, it was it was fine, but like when it came to stop and like read when I had my reading time, because I have certain times a day that I do read, uh, I just wasn't super excited to pick it up. And that tells me that, you know, the book isn't maybe great. Uh, but at the same time, it wasn't so terrible that I was like, Ugh, I'm, I'm just gonna stop because I was just interested enough in the story to keep reading, which is probably a personal flaw of mine. <laughs> I gotta learn to just be like, to, if I'm not gonna care, to really not care. Um, but it was one of those things where I was like, well, I do want to know how it ends. And then I was sorry because it was so stupid. <laughs> In any case, let me know your thoughts on this or other books. Maybe you have recommendations for things I might like more that would fit the bill. Um, and yeah, until next time, take care.